Like well, he wants it in because the match. Yeah, just leave it. All right. All right. Actually, starting room tone. No. Wait. Cut and okay, Thomas. Okay, guys, listen up. Uh, this is a wrap. Yeah. 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 Party in the no. house. <laughs> I don't want to get that. <laughs> right. I'll have to load up the casket camera and dolly and drive to Cincinnati at like 7 a.m. <laughs> Okay, so it was a very difficult shoot, but once, you know, we kind of greased the machine and got everyone moving, um, it went really well. How are we doing? We'll be shooting in 75 minutes. Okay. We should get Josh here. All right, guys, let's go back. Shot five, take one. Hi, Daddy. This is a very heavy, dramatic role. So we thought it would be a really good experience for her to um, give it a shot. So she auditioned, and they called and said they really wanted her. Right. This guy, this girl is great. It was crazy when we were in the car uh, doing Emma's shot. It was so awesome because basically we had prepared what Janice and Brian would be saying back and forth to each other. But essentially, I just wanted Emma to be like upset. So we worked on like all the different ways that she could be upset and how she could express that and stuff. So we, I just said, you know, like just try to get him to stop. So Brian says, this is what you teach her. You teach her to scream and cry until she gets what she wants. And Emma, in the scene, as the character, she says, I'm not screaming and crying. And she continues and stuff. But that, to me, really stood out because that meant that she was actually listening and responding to what the other actors were giving her. Come on. No, Dad. Don't cry. I'll give you something to cry Stop about. Stop it. Don't do this. I'll see you at home. She was only playing. Come on. Of course, then they had cast Jesse two, three, and four, and Emma looks just like her. So that helped. <laughs> I had done Josh's film last year, and I really liked it. And I got a hold of the script. I, I hunted it down and <laughs> read it and instantly loved it, and like just had a really personal connection to it. Can you come over to the castle? Yeah. <laughs> the good thing about working with Josh is he's like very respectful of, of like scenes that call for a lot. And Josh is really good about checking in about that. And he, because we spend so much time in rehearsal talking about like what's happening there and how I relate to it, blah, blah, blah. Like he can say one thing and I'm like, oh, yeah, we talked about that. Jesse's character has an overall arc that's split into five different segments and it very easily could have been kind of paint by numbers, you know? I'm supposed to be angry, I'm supposed to be depressed, I'm supposed to be in denial. But Leah took each character as uh, their own person and uh, kind of perfected where they were coming from. Jesse too, is 17 years old, and she's an angsty teen, which is kind of funny because I had a moment like that in middle school, and so I was like, I get that. <laughs> I know what that looks like. I think mostly what I worked on with her, something that was really important to me, was yeah, the anger's there, but that's very surface, and it's this like hard shell that she's put on. But it's still, everything else that happens with the other characters is a part of her. I really played with first like embedding that relationship that she has with her father and then putting on that rough exterior. 
I will never think about you again after this. Jessie three is 28 years old. She's preggers. She lives in the past. That's what we worked on with her a lot. She um, wants to live in these memories and she wants to, but she starts to have these realizations that she can't. And so, you know, it's her struggling with this, these memories that she has and how good they were and what's reality and what's memory. What is your memory altered? I just want that safety again. And then Jessie Four, she's um, kind of really worn and exhausted. It's definitely like Jessie's lowest point. It's kind of cool because some of Jessie at 17 comes back into it with the anger. Will it all suddenly make sense? Will you suddenly make sense? Having a mom play her daughter at an older age is like, I think that's just awesome. Well, I really like the whole progress of Jesse, and, and I think everyone at my age has been through some experience that they can relate to Jesse and going through a traumatic experience. When I first read for the role, I was very angry. I went to a place that I was just shaking. I was so mad. And then when I went home and thought about it, I thought, Jesse's not mad at 55. She's over it. There was a lot of passion in it, um, but I knew that that's not where the character was going. So she comes in for the rehearsal phase and I had a bunch of notes prepared about like how I'm gonna get her to understand where the character is at this point in her life. Um, but she came in and she was just like, you know, I don't think she's angry anymore. I think she's over that. I'm just like, well, mark that off my list of things to say. So the way I'm playing it now is completely different from how I read it the first time, but it's a neat role, it's a neat script. And the sad thing is, Dad, you will never know me. Essentially, with Brian and Janice, working with such experienced actors, it provided me the opportunity to do something I've never done before, which is directing improv and crafting scenes on the spot, almost. I could tell Brian what he wanted out of the scene. I could tell Janice what she wanted out of the scene. And then they just attack each other and find out what works, find out what doesn't. Made, made a beat sheet out of that, went home, typed up a script based on like recordings of them just going back and forth, just off the top of their head. Don't wanna talk, just stop it. Talk about this in the car. Hopefully um, everyone feels this way, but I know I especially do, that it wasn't just one thing that I learned on this movie. like. I never call myself a filmmaker, but after this film, I feel like a filmmaker. On the whole, there's a lot of things I, I appreciate about the design of the movie, and that's what's unique. Josh has a very specific kind of plan, and the design was built in, and that's nice. The school of film didn't have this camera, and it's sort of a higher-end camera. Um, so Josh went out of his way to rent something nice that would look good, for his visual aspirations. And I got to experience a new camera from a rental house in Ohio. So that was really enjoyable. I'm Truman, and I was dolly gripping using the Fisher 11 dolly, which is worth like $70,000, and it was crazy awesome. I've never dealt with rental houses. I've never dealt with insurance, because I'm still a kid, and I don't know what insurance is. Uh, I've never dealt you know, with all these policies going through the university. I've never dealt with SAG. Yeah, one of my main jobs is basically to keep paperwork, keep track of uh, receipts. And I also have a lot of forms for the um, Screen Actors Guild because one of our actors is a SAG actor. And so we've got like three or four forms per day that we have to fill out for him. Well, I've never had to do any of that, but because we accrued the funds, by way of Indiegogo, I was able to experience all these things, and I know that next time it's going to be even better than the next time, and the next time, and the next time. We're taking a bit of a non traditional approach in that uh, we are recording source sounds by um, a bunch of extended techniques with the piano, and then I will do the majority of the